Welcome back to Gale Force Winds Season 3. Gale Force Winds Podcast is proudly sponsored by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association. The NLCA provides unparalleled opportunities for its members through industry education, construction information, government advocacy, and networking events. The NLCA is building Newfoundland and Labrador. For more information, visit nlca.ca. Hello folks, welcome to a very special edition of Gale Force Winds. My name is Jerry Carew and I have two very interesting people with us today. We're going to have a special what we'll call co-host but really she's going to be the host because i'm getting out of the way but uh fatima came to my house uh, she's in school with my son and uh, we had a wonderful meal and during that meal she mentioned susan's name and i've seen susan on linkedin one of the most positive people that i've seen her content is always positive so i said to fatima you know i've been thinking about interviewing susan and when fatima you know presented her Herself in such an articulate manner uh, we figured you know what let's have a conversation but here's the other thing you know at Gale Force Winds we want to mentor youth and I think um, this is an example of where we're doing that so I'm getting out of the way and I'm letting Fatima take this away yes well nice to meet you again Susan I guess you too lovely to be here happy holidays in advance if I forget to say it later <laughs> so have you been I've been well, thank you. It's been a busy fall, and um, as you know, there's been a lot of work uh, as a coach and consultant and all kinds of good things Absolutely. with many people around the world. I was very, very surprised to see you at the Illuminate because I barely see you at one, so I was like, first time ever I see Susan. The event. Illuminate event, oh my goodness, that yep. was amazing uh, to be able to support young female entrepreneurs Absolutely, and yeah. uh, gender diverse youth as well, of course, uh, and to see their innovations, their ideas, their leadership is just such an amazing uh, experience. I think it was a great timing because um, I personally had a marketing project due next week, mm -hmm. the week after the Illuminate, so it was like a real-time, like, project view for me because I was seeing people presenting and I was like oh that's great we're gonna take that we're gonna see what they did right and what we didn't like and we're gonna propose it and like there was a lot of other students who were sitting next to me who were from the same class mm -hmm. and we were like okay this is what we're supposed to do see they're saying this so they're asking these questions so it's extremely important to know the answers to those questions which is like pretty fascinating I didn't know that it was for female until I got there and they gave me the stickers and I was like wow I was meant to be here <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, it was a great time, and I was very happy to see your picture on the brochures or whatever. Oh, thank you. It's good to be able to give back Absolutely. and uh, to support in any way that I can locally. Oh, awesome. Um, for the people that um, might not know you well, would you like to say what you do? Sure. Uh, I'm a work in progress, I think, like yes. many people. I, um, after 25 years in education, I decided that it was time to do something different. So uh, back in 2014, I left uh, the education system. Uh, I was in a senior leadership role there with the school district, and I opened my own business, Clear Path Leadership. And as part of that, I have multiple streams of business. I am a coach um, <clears throat> with emerging leaders and senior leaders around yes. the world. I mentor, I work as a consultant and um, strategic coach with uh, many nonprofit organizations. Many, it seems to be, the, the road has taken me down many women-led organizations in particular. I think we're all meant to be in that road. <laughs> <laughs> and another project that has been quite interesting for me since 2016 is my work in the United Arab Emirates, which I think draw us together Absolutely. originally. Um, I have a leadership role with them in their government excellence program. And so I work in the field of human capital and leadership development, and I get to interview and 
provide feedback to the senior leaders of yep. their government, as well as people in the human resources spaces across many multiple government ministries. And I get to work with the best people doing that. And you're a good friend. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I get to I get to meet many people and you know, you start with all the things that we face in the world, you know, we come from, I come from a small place here in Newfoundland and Labrador, but when we look around the world, we're, it's about that cup of tea that we share or coffee. It's Absolutely. about people. It's about finding what makes us the same, celebrating what makes us a little bit different and finding ways that we can have mutual impact. I could not agree more because, um, Personally, the thing that draw me like to the friendship with you was the fact that you were using the things that I was very used to, like dropping the Arab boards that I use every day. And I was like, okay, finally someone who knows a little bit about me and I can learn about them back and keep it in me. So like when you start living in a different community, you like to be like them, but not completely. You want to offer yourself and take what you like from them and present it in the best way possible. And I feel like the friendship with you kind of give that to me because I was at the edge of leaving Newfoundland because I was very much so ready to leave St. John's because my school gradings were in the best, let's just say. Um, and for the very first time, instead of someone giving me advice to what's right and wrong, someone questioned me. And I find questioning people in a positive way is always useful. And that was one thing that I was like, okay, wow. Finally, someone who <laughs> who has so much knowledge, as opposed to giving me advice, is challenging me to find the reason on my own, which is pretty interesting. I'm not going to lie. So, <laughs> You know, as a coach, as a mentor, as a friend, yeah. uh, as you were speaking, I was thinking about uh, that line from um, Ted, Ted Lasso, uh, be curious, not judgmental. Yeah. And I think curiosity drives how I talk, how I think, because, you know, there's, there's, no, there's very little black and white in the world. And I think we all need to constantly question ourselves yep. and reflect and kind of think about, am I on the right path? Is there something that I should be doing more of or less of? And when I look at you, and when I think about, as I listened to you the first time that we met, tapping into those wonderful strengths that you have, um, your Thank ability, you. you know, your persona, your personality, everything, the way you look at the world is such a gift. And I think as we were talking the first time that you were kind of hiding that gift a little bit maybe? Yes, I am, I'm not going to... I'm going to be truthful, let's just say. Oh, please. Um, I feel like at that point of time, I was at this position in my life that I couldn't trust anybody anymore because I got fired from my job, I, um, I was failing my school, and the most important thing, I feel like I was failing my parents' hopes, and I didn't have the courage to tell them, so I was hiding myself from everybody, not just them. And I remember when I decided to see you, because we, we saw each other... Um, and then I asked you for a coffee probably after a month mm -hmm. and it was me thinking for a full month because I wasn't sure I was like should I should I not should I because like in reality I'm a person that likes to experience journey so I would ask people to meet them have a chat and everything but at that point of time I was just not comfortable and I remember I didn't tell anybody that I was meeting you or anything but then I sent a picture of myself and I was like I am meeting a very successful woman but I don't know what she do and I was like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I do most days either <laughs> and, then, and then he was like do you know her at all I was like no but I'm I'm supposed to be knowing her now I guess and then when we started having a chat I was feeling more comfortable again because I I, I soon figured that you're not judging me you're not there to judge my personality you're just there to know who I am and that was one thing that I wasn't getting from the people that at a time were my friends let's just say and um, I remember one of the main things that you asked me was when we started talking about Enactus, you asked me who's my circle of people. And 
as much as I wanted to answer you directly and right away, I had no answer. <laughs> so I was just like, I have so many friends, but you know what? Like I started school late, so I was bringing excuses, and I knew that I was bringing excuses at the time. And I went home, and I think myself, and I was like, do I even have a circle here? And I realized, no, I don't. I absolutely don't. So I was like, I should meet Susan again, because I need to like talk more about this, because I want to know what is that circle that I'm missing, because maybe that's the reason why I'm failing all these things around me. And we didn't get to see each other for a while, and then time passed by, and meanwhile I was like, thinking about it, thinking about it, change my degree. And I understood the importance of circle of people around you back then. And I wasn't aware of it because I had a good circle of friends back home. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it here because I was new here. And you asking that question kind of let me through finding the right people for me. Because everyone's amazing. They might not just be the person for you. And time passed by and I made my circle and I was more confident and we met and I was like, do you remember you asked me this question? And you were like, yes. So I <laughs> realized, okay, so she knows about the things that she says because most of the time people just, you know, throw words at you. But it was obvious that everything that you were sharing were, was extremely thoughtful and there was this background on it. So I really enjoy it, let's just say. That circle of friend thing was very, very key to my problem I would say as I'm listening to you and reflecting on our many conversations you know often and I, I coach and lecture and lecture I hate to lecture I, I talk about this a lot maybe that's a better word um, with women in particular that concept of and I hesitate to use the concept imposter syndrome or authenticity or being yourself and um, and the other expression that comes to mind that I talk about your circle of friends your personal board of directors who are you surrounding yourself with and that that was one of the questions I asked yeah. you who are you surrounding yourself with that is guiding you is supporting you give me a kick in the butt when you need it who is helping you make wise choices you know that the concept of advisors like a board like a governance board yeah. in your life that helps you make good decisions because we all go down roads we all try to explore things which is a good thing we're curious people yeah and my sense was when we met that you're cur you were at the end of that road in yes. in that curiosity and so you you need it your circle to yes. pull you back and say okay let's try this one what you were I think maybe hiding just a little bit was really you the yeah. you that we love the, the <laughs> Fatima that is able to lead a project to combine different things to make beauty to to sit here today and interview me yeah. I appreciate so I'm, all I'm nice packing words. your authenticity knowing truly who you are you're good, you're bad, and you're ugly. Uh, <laughs> it's really important to to be surrounded by people that you trust and who love that, who love you as you. Yeah. Uh, and that are that aren't going to lead you down. Will let you be curious, but are also going to be there for you when you when you need to step back a little. That's. I think I I learned from you that asking for help comes in different dimensions, and you can ask for opportunities as help, let's just say. Finding the right people, using them as a lead. Because I remember when I first saw you and we had our conversation, I started using you as my lead. So I was like, if she made it out of Newfoundland successfully, why wouldn't I be able to do that? I know that she's from here. I know that she is way more educated than I am, but she started somewhere. So. It was kind of like that moment when I realized I need to start with my circle of people around me. And I was more selective back then. I'm more selective now with the people that I like to communicate with, chat with, keep in my life. I know the limitations for each person. Um, I try to show myself as a friendly and a good woman, but that doesn't mean that 
um, I need to keep everybody close. And I think that was one thing I learned. And I was like, amazing. Okay, I'm gonna, because that's one thing I really like about people is to learn one of the biggest positive things from them and keeping it to yourself for the rest of your life. I take that from you. Oh, and I was like, thank you so much. Amazing. <laughs> um, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you in the past, and I never did. Oh, cool. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> is um, a lot of people ask me in Newfoundland, what is the biggest cultural shock that I experienced in Canada? Um, it can be about anything. What was the biggest culture of shock about UAE, United Arab Emirates, that you experienced the first time you went there? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so uh, my first time there was in September 2016. And I remember getting off the plane in Abu Dhabi and very, and I had traveled internationally before, but I knew I was going to this place for a month. And hmm, seeing so many people covered yes not in niqab but um both men and women of course in kafea or their hijab or whatever whatever outfit they chose to wear so that was interesting but it wasn't culture shock what was a culture shock it would take a lot to shock let me, me. okay let me let me tell you okay. my cultural shock maybe it will. okay so when I landed in Toronto, this was 25th of December 2019, um, I remember the police officer asking me, how was my day? And I've never been like asked those questions from someone that I don't know. Oh, okay. So I thought he was testing me and I had no idea what to answer. So I was like, good, I guess. Do we know each other? And then he goes like, no, I was just asking, how was your day? I was like, Okay, and then I came to Newfoundland and I'm walking, like, doing my grocery shopping and I see random people talk to me. And it's not that it's abnormal, it's just that I've never experienced mm -hmm. people asking me how was my day, that's not a question that... Huh? So I was like, is this a real thing? Do I have to start asking people that I don't know who they are? At the time, I felt uncomfortable. As the time passed, that became something positive because I would make more connections. I would get to know people and I'll get the positive energy for, for the rest of my day. So I like it now, but I can see when someone comes from the outside, um, how they would view it and be like, this is not normal. Why would you ask me how was my day? <laughs> I, I don't think we know each other. I think for me, as I reflect, as I listen to you, uh, one thing that was different for me was my biases that I brought to my work and unpacking those. And so, perhaps an unconscious bias that I had previous to working in the UAE was that women in particular had to be more reserved, that they had a lesser role. And when I think about where they sit in the mosque, how they are covered. So I walked in and I saw everybody covered, men, women, yeah. everything. And sometimes it helps to have dark hair like I do because many people automatically speak to me in Arabic versus English, so I kind of fit in, but I realized that I didn't fit in. I realized for the first time in my life, well, not the first time in my life, but uh, in my working life, that I was an outsider. And yeah. so I did my best to observe and reflect and connect yeah. with people, and in connecting with women in particular, because as you know, in the governments there, it's there's so many women in senior leadership roles, particularly in the fields that yes. I work in. And uh, I work closely with many Emirati and mm. Arabic women now. And it's, it's, some people say, do you see the hijab? Yes, I see the hijab. And I'm comfortable with that. And I think that's a celebration of who they are. The, absolutely. That, 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 that shows they choose. Yes. And that was an interesting observation for me, that they choose to wear this. Um, I also was got over my biases about engaging, of course, respectfully and conservatively with uh, the men in yeah. that part of the world. And 
I feel like I'm working back in my workplace in Newfoundland and Labrador now when I go over. You know, it's a first name basis. It's um, how are you doing, Marwan? How are you doing, Fatima? Yeah, uh, it's, a and, you know, and that, it's the same thing. And I was with the Inshallah now. The Inshallah, God yeah. willing, is something that um, is natural for me. You know, in Newfoundland, we always say, oh, please, God, that will happen. Yeah. And so <laughs> I tend to always use Inshallah now. Inshallah. Versus, so it's, it's kind of something that has become natural for me versus disrespectful. I would never use that term disrespectfully, but it's something that has, it's part of my lexicon now in terms oh, of my yes, work. yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, I like that because that's one thing that we experience growing up. There are so many English words in all of our cultures. Um, I've never looked at using them disrespectfully because they're just in the culture. And I'm very surprised to see many people using, I feel like that will make you more connected to the people from the other side of the world because they view it differently. They would see you as someone who knows a tiny bit about their culture so they would feel comfortable getting closer to you and talking to you because they're like, okay, if she's using this word, she probably have read something. She probably know about our background. She will understand us and they'll reach out to you and start having a conversation, which is like key. <laughs> so key to going anywhere, UAE, Saudi Arabia, China, Morocco, any part of the world is to really, if you're going there as a tourist, go in with an open mind and an open heart. If yeah. you're going there to work, go in with an open mind and an open heart. Do your homework. Yes, be a learner. Be a learner. It, it, embrace the differences because in embracing the differences, you're going to find the commonalities. Yeah. Um, you know, go to a souk, walk through the community. If you're in Newfoundland, let's go, as you and I did, go down to Kitty Vitty and yeah. walk around the gut and figure that out. So I've never been to Kitty Vitty well, before that. <laughs> <laughs> but those sorts of things help us find common ground. That is very true. And it's so, as a leader, you know, we can watch the news. We And I'm not going to get into politics, but these conversations, happen over a cup of tea, Absolutely. a cup of coffee. And there's what, they are what changed the world. That one-on-one -on -one connection, that power of personal connection, that power of your circle of friends yes. can really make such a difference in so many lives. Very true, very, very true. Some of the best people I've ever met in my entire life were the people that I just randomly start talking to. And I am so surprised. I get to know an Emirati girl while I was buying a watch. Mm -hmm. And now, every day, she send me an Emirati, because like you know Arabic and Emirati are similar, mm -hmm. but it's an accent. So she sent me a sentence in Emirati and translated it in English, and then I will have to say something that's more Canadian. Like I taught her how to say, best kind, and she had no <laughs> idea what it was. Or um, I started- I'm using Tangly a lot. Yes. <laughs> I, I, and at some point she messaged me and she was like, see, I don't know if that's a Canadian thing or not, but I really like how you call me love at the end of every sentence. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's a newfie thing, I guess. It is a newfie thing. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I like it a lot. I think I'm going to start using it. I was like, you got to be careful who you're using it with because they might not know what it means. Mm -hmm. It's pretty common in Newfoundland to call everybody your yeah. love. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily your love or anything. Habibi. It's just a hub Fair enough, yeah. So now every time she sends me a sentence, it'd be like, this, this, and that, Habib T. And I'm like, you're learning how to be new fee in UAE. <laughs> and she is liking it because she gets to see what's happening here. And I like that connection because at the same time that I am learning more about the Emirati culture while being away, she gets to experience um, what's happening in Canada, in mm -hmm. Newfoundland in particular. She gets to see snow. She had never seen snow in her life. Um, and she sends me pictures of the Sahara. And I'm like, oh wow, this reminds me of home. It's a new journey to her because she sees snow. And it's amazing. Like I cherish those friendships a lot because I get to write about them. I don't know if you do any diaries or journals. I do. I absolutely love doing diaries every single night. I'm not as good as you, and I know <laughs> you've done that for so long. You just reminded me of something. Um, you know, Newfoundland and Labrador, I grew up in a tiny little community, close to an American naval base, actually, and um, was always inspired to travel 
And actually, when I did my undergrad, I did travel to Harlow to finish wow. my uh, final, my internship. And that's what I love about MUN, or Memorial University, um, is that there are opportunities to experience new places and new things, particularly in education, business, uh, Nur I don't say maybe nursing uh, and engineering. I mean, multiple faculties give us that opportunity to travel yeah. and to learn and to do something different. And I encourage people to embrace that as much as possible. Um, in Newfoundland and Labrador, our culture is so you know cup of tea ish yes. and making people feel welcome and. Um, as we need, as we continue to grow, as you know, our our population declines. I think of other places around the world that continue to welcome newcomers. Yeah. And uh, you know, when I think about the Genesis Center and you and uh, Association for New Canadians and our different industries that are in Newfoundland and Labrador, we need to continue to open our minds and hearts. Yeah. and to welcome people here and to continue to explore diversity yeah. and inclusion at the same time. Uh, it's well and good to be the province that is known for come from away and taking care of people, but as leaders, we really need to step up our game too and make sure that we keep you here. It's like, don't forget where you're from but remember how to belong where you are. Yeah. And I... <laughs> are you sure you're not a Newfoundlander with an accent? <laughs> <laughs> I am sure I'm not. <laughs> Definitely not a Newfoundlander. Um, but I like the people. Um, that's one thing that kept me. People like mm -hmm. you, who was very open and honest about everything, kind of sat me in my place that you need patience. I feel like patience is one of the things that is missing in a lot of people's lives. And understanding it early on helps you a lot along uh, along the way. And I feel like people like you understand the depth of importance of patience more than someone like me. <laughs> so asking them will kind of like remind you that you need it in your life. There's an old expression, patience is a virtue. And I think that's something I've been blessed with my whole life, though I'm not very patient at the moment with the with the sore arm. It's all good. <laughs> um, patience, yes, but we need to be careful with patience too. That's very true. Sometimes patience can lead to forget it, letting other people almost take over. Yeah, taking and advantage of you. Taking advantage, you know, your patience, your kindness, and they often go together. It's being very aware of those traits, those values that you have, and how they are great for you, but also how they may get in your way, and really pushing it a bit more, getting out there, doing something a little bit different. Um, show that yourself. Show yourself, you know, celebrate you, get out and make a choice you might fail but that's okay yeah failure is part of it get back on the horse or the camel or whatever it may be get back in that car <laughs> get up off the sidewalk <laughs> and forge ahead um and couple that with patience couple that with kindness couple that with eyes wide open too because they're i'm always conscious of being positive which is a strength of mine, but sometimes that can get in my way too. And so patience with humility, patience with learning, patience coupled with strategy, uh, all of those things together yep. can really help you forge ahead Just and make that difference. Enough. I find that, I don't want to say this may sound not very correctly, I might be wrong, so you can definitely correct no me. No such but, thing. <laughs> I feel like women offer way more patience in different industries than men. And I feel like part of the reason why me myself will question myself in the beginning is because I've learned to propose my patience as opposed to my talents a lot of times. And once I take the talent, I'll put down the patience. You have to know how to hold them both at the same time and then you will push forward. There's a great concept called integrative thinking. 
Yeah. And you just hit the nail on so many things okay. that time. <laughs> There's like a dissertation waiting to happen right here. <laughs> um, yes, we have. We've learned that as women. That's been celebrated. We lo look at industries, the pink industries, teaching, nursing, government even, yeah. uh, female dominant. Why? Because these are industries, particularly in education and nursing, that require patients, and we've been pushed that way as yeah. women. Um, the biases associated with how people think women should behave, how women leaders should behave. Yeah. I can tell you I have great men in my life who have more patience than me, uh, but yet people don't talk about that. Yes. Uh, but they will talk about my patience. It's, it's a value, a trait, that is more often attributed to women yep. than men and expected from women than a men. A lot more. Yeah. Absolutely. And so then how do we integrate those? How do we integrate patience in both steps? How, and that concept of integrative thinking, yep. of, dis, of, of knowing and doing, Absolutely. can really push yourself forward. Being Very strategic. Good. Right on point. Um, I remember you also introduced me to Techquity Plus, so I want to bring that in since we're talking about female, I think they deserve to be talked about. Um, I remember the first time that I went to Techquity Plus, it was at Keene College, and I had no idea, but I saw all these female dressed up really nicely, and I thought it would be a very not aggressive, but like a real meeting meeting. Mm -hmm. And I saw they sat down and started sharing their experiences. And I saw how they were honest and true about themselves, how they would talk about their positivities and their negativities. How can we make it better? So that how can we make it better was my biggest question that I was like looking for in my life. Mm -hmm. And seeing all those women kind of like giving it out was a big hit for me. I was like, I'm gonna go. It was pretty far from where I live actually at the time. But then it moved to Verifin and every month, it's like the happiest day of my life because I get to be in a different circle, but a circle that are very, very educated and positive. There are all kinds of things that we talk about. Everything is gonna stay in the room. Nothing's gonna make out. Like, it's just our experiences shared together and not judging each other, basically, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And um, I like how women share their stories and I can relate to that, even though I'm probably one of the youngest members <laughs> that, that are sitting there, they're a very successful woman. Um, and I had the pleasure of being in that room with them. So looking at them gives me hope and motivation to move forward. And I, I told Jacqueline the last time, I was like, I'm very grateful because this has been my golden ticket in Newfoundland because <laughs> I get to see like I get to meet a lot of people and it's not you asking them for anything it's just you learning from them quietly on the side when they talk about different issues that are happening in the world it's more so like a North American base but I can see that all the issues that are being addressed is actually worldwide they talk about female in sports and how they're less dressed than men in North America. Mm -hmm. In East, we're having the opposite. Women are overdressed. Now I'm not saying that which is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that it's easy to compare because it's a problem. A problem is a problem everywhere. And the comparison in my mind while they're talking is just so interesting. Because I get to sit there for one day <laughs> in the month that I don't have to think about school and experience something that's out of what I learn in school, and that's reality. And I enjoy it a lot, thanks to you. So I wanted to just... Oh, I'm so glad that you're taking advantage of that. Techquity is doing amazing work locally. Yeah. Enlo is doing amazing work locally. And th there's so many people that are just elevating the stories of entrepreneurs, of women leaders, yeah. of people wanting to make that difference. You talked about problems. Problems are opportunities waiting to be solved. Absolutely. And looking at those conversations, I always think, okay, great chat. What's next? Yeah. What what one bold step shall I do? I'll use the brand. Why am I taking what out? What one bold step can we do? And bold can be small. 
Yeah. What one can we do after today? And maybe it's through education. Maybe it's saying no to someone or something. Maybe it is uh, helping change policy. Maybe it's just empowering someone when they go back to their workplace that they're able to do something a little bit different too. And I love the work that Jacqueline and her team are doing yeah. on that, that Enlo is doing on that, that so many other organizations in Newfoundland and Labrador are doing too. I am very, very, very surprised by that. I'm not gonna lie because I come from, well, I lived in Dubai and there are lots of female organizations, as you may know already. Um, so I've seen a lot of female groups talking different places and everything but getting to experience that in Newfoundland was very very different for me personally mm -hmm. because I get to know that the challenges that female face is exactly the same everywhere like literally it's the same thing and being able to kind of share your perspective kinds of open the door to other places and other problems which I really like about Tequity Plus because we start talking about one thing and then it leads to another and another and another and we tackle up all those problems and we find the solution at the end because you're supposed to take something from that conversation mm -hmm. one thing i well i'm not going to take this way too differently but i am not a huge fan of video games mainly because i'm not taking anything out of it because mm -hmm. <laughs> i like to have something that i can use i know that a lot of people are like i'm i'm gonna start typing faster but for me it's when I'm having a conversation, I'm taking a key point and I'm keeping it for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. You might not be able to take that from a lot of people, a lot of conversations, a lot of things. And that's a hint for you to move on, move past through it, find something else for yourself. And somewhere like Tequity Plus kinds of, kind of like open the doors for you to understand what you're looking for. And I really, really enjoy that. Like the opportunity that Jacqueline, Wanda and Heather kind of proposed because I remember the first meeting that I went to there was probably 30 people and then now it's like over 100 every time excellent yeah it's amazing like we I just sit down and get to know all these very interesting people and talk to them for the rest of the day and kind of ask for their help like remember I remember that we were looking for some statistics for one of our projects and I just throw an email to this person that I met at Tequity Plus and she was more than Your happy to help. circle of friends? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're back to the first point. <laughs> circle of friends, very, very important. Very, very important. And I also get to know more about, like, I know that I'm younger than those female, but I always had a hard time understanding my mom and what she does from time to time. Mm -hmm. When I see their perspective, because they're so open and honest about it, a lot of the things that my mom does make sense to me. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh wow, this is why she did that. This is why she was acting like mm -hmm. that. So it teaches me how to be a better person and a better woman and a more successful businesswoman. Because all these female are at the point with what they're doing. They know where they are. Um, they know how to communicate with you and everything. And I like that. I like that circle of people. Something just jumped in my mind as I was listening to you and we talked about the beginning about you know your circle of friends your board of directors mentorship and coaching um, let's not forget what you're giving back to yeah. and what I love about mentoring in particular is that I see it as a mutual relationship and not a power imbalance and so as you know as an older woman Yes, I share with you, but you also share with me. Yeah. And it's your lived experience that helps me think differently, that helps me revise my coaching, revise how I might be addressing a problem, a policy, a strategy when I'm working with other organizations because I will keep you yeah. in mind when I'm doing that. I don't need to design organizations for 56 year old women and men we need to make the best organizations for you for you know the people that are currently are going into the workforce and so that's what you give back to you give your energy your beauty your leadership yeah but you also help us 
as I guess more senior leaders in organizations take different steps, do things differently, create policies, procedures, structures, kick down walls that really can create the organizations that we want things the way we want things to be. Absolutely. It reminds me of KHDA, so the educational system in mm -hmm. UAE, because they are, <clears throat> I've, I've talked about this with many people here, and how they seek for answers from students, because their minds are pretty fascinating, let's just say. They're open to all opportunities. They're thinking out of circle. And growing up, the questions that they asked us, I remember because Again, I write a lot of diaries, and I remember reaching out to them, asking them to write me a note. And I actually have paragraphs from every year at the back of my diaries mm -hmm. of them writing it with like different handwritings, but a paragraph. And in return, they would ask me a question, one of the questions that they asked. So why do you think UAE is surrounded by sand? That question might sound, might sound like very dumb to an adult, but to me, it was mm -hmm. a fascinating question. I was like, well, because if they don't have sand, then how, how are we going to go to Sahara? Like, where am I going to go have fun? Where am I going to go have kebabs and um, chais and stuff, mm -hmm. right? So it might sound like an ordinary answer, but they were looking for the sand issue in UAE because they wanted to add us with the turbines and everything to make the weather better. And I am sure that they'll get a better answer from the kids in school. I agree. Than talking to just random people. In UAE, they just finished COP28. I think it yep. was. Um, and again, not going to be political, but one of the outcomes and things that I know about countries in that part of the world, and he, even here in Canada, we're trying to get away from the industries that are wrecking havoc on our world, yeah. on, on climate change, on, on the way things are right now and moving to a more innovative and knowledge-based economy. And you gave a perfect example yeah. of, of what I get to see as we move towards using our brains more, uh, you, being more innovative, doing things a little being bit differently. Being real. Being real, tapping into amazing people like you. Oh, tapping into youth, you. tapping into, and I'm going full circle here now, Hannah and Jessica and the the young women that won the Illuminate that yeah. presented there, drawing on the best minds to make that difference. Amazing. I love this conversation so much. I haven't had a deep conversation like that recently because I've been studying for my finals, but <laughs> it's a good break. I've been correcting finals, so I get it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Please give them good grades. I did. I did. <laughs> Some of us are really struggling. <laughs> I remember in one of my tests, I was so nervous that all I could think of was Italian instead of English. And then when I was writing my Italian final, all I could think of was English and not Italian. I was like, great this is the right moment for me <laughs> um thank you so much for this conversation um i do you want to ask me any questions i just came as to be curious today yes. and i had no idea what questions you were going to ask me but i knew it would be a beautiful conversation thank and you. so thank you for thinking of me and yes. taking the time with me today absolutely i honestly didn't think about the questions either just because i wanted to keep it real I like always, our coffee yes it's a coffee chat let's just say Wonderful. so i really enjoyed it thank you so so much you're very welcome well, well folks um i think it's quite obvious as to uh why we brought these two wonderful people together today yeah. and uh in sitting and watching this it's just an amazing conversation and listening to people bring uh, you two bring your perspectives uh, you susan bringing your perspective and and i know this is your show today but i'm going to ask a question <laughs> of you and a question of you um um you know uh, gale force winds you had the opportunity to travel around the world and uh, for me i had a 35-year career here in st john's bit of travel around canada but 
What does it feel like, Susan, when you're in the UAE and you're actually presenting some of your ideas? You know, I feel incredibly proud of myself when I'm doing that. Listening to you talk, I'm incredibly proud of you. What is it like to be doing that in another country and bringing some of your ideology and thinking? Oh, great question. Um, I remember, again, 2016, October 2016, my first time. Uh, there and I'm standing up presenting in front of very senior people and I was thinking, oh my god, I'm a far cry from Jerseyside now. <laughs> Jerseyside Placentia, if you're familiar with the area. Yes. Um, I was and I wasn't. I was in a new place. I was speaking to very senior people, but you know, that's how I was raised. And here in Newfoundland and Labrador, I applaud our education system. I applaud the values that make us seek common ground for people. Uh, and I, 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 I guess I applaud my parents too for making sure that I was equipped to go anywhere in the world and to seek every day as a new adventure, to take that bold step. Thank you for that. Yes. Fatima, I'm going to put you on the spot now. Um, in listening to you talk, I mean, you're such an articulate person. But I got to ask you this: wherever you end up in the world, and I mean, you're in, you're on an incredible path. What do you think your experience in Newfoundland is going to mean to you, say, in 20 years' time? If you were to reflect on it, what do you think this experience would mean to you? Um, I think I experienced independence here first. And I think that's one of the things that I'm going to take with me everywhere that I go. A place like Newfoundland gave me the opportunity of experiencing that because when I get away from my parents, um, I get to know more people. It was more opportunity for me to break out of my comfort zone. Not saying that when I was with my parents, I wasn't like that, but I felt comfortable in this, in this city or like in Newfoundland to connect with people and build up on my own like independency as opposed to just being connected to people because like finding yourself in your ground is is hard let's just say because mm -hmm. when i look at my friends who are living there they obviously chose to live with their parents they obviously chose to not get out of where they're from but they also don't know much about independence to give you a better perspective when you live with your parents you don't know how to pay bills you don't know um a lot of things like the bills is just sm the smallest thing ever mm. but when i got here no matter how much money you have no matter how how much support you have you have to do it on your own and that on your own thing was something that i learned in newfoundland because a lot of people actually know how to live on their own and i take that from here let's say well uh, folks again i just want to say this that uh I am so pleased to be able to bring these two incredible women to Gale Force Winds, and it was just an absolute pleasure listening to you, and I think anyone who listens to this and watches the video will agree. Um, let's do something again in the next, say, six months. Let's so, revisit some topic, because I had so much fun. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure that we, can, like, me and Susan can have lots of conversations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Gale Force Winds. That's Gale Force Winds, W-I-N-S dot com.